My client just sent me this screenshot. He's lost 10 pounds in just 30 days, all while raising three kids and running a business. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the four-step plan that I gave him so that you can copy it and do the same. And just in case you were thinking this was a flu, well, he's not the first of my clients to get amazing results. Sam lost 65 pounds in less than a year. Pete got lean in just seven weeks. James got absolutely shredded. Paul lost 30 pounds in 12 weeks. And Heather lost four stone. And the success stories go on and on and on. All four steps to this plan are important, but the final step is the most important, but it's also where most people fail. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video if you're serious about losing the weight. I appreciate this video is on the longer side, and I'm sure you're not the type of person to click off a YouTube video after just a couple of minutes, but if you are, if you click just about here, you're going to be able to change the playback speed to 1.5. Now you can watch the whole video in less time and still get the full blueprint. I should start by saying that losing 10 pounds in a month is not easy. In fact, it's very difficult and it's not what I'd recommend most people do. Most of my clients aim to lose one to two pounds each week. Losing 10 pounds in just 30 days means that you have to lose 2.3 pounds every single week. And to give you an idea of what 10 pounds actually is, this is what one pound of fat looks like. Pretty big, isn't it? So imagine losing 10 of these in the next 30 days. You can absolutely do this, and I'm gonna give you the full blueprint in this video. But if you're serious, you're going to have to change almost every aspect of your life for the next month. Saying that, I will start with some potentially good news. The bigger you are right now, the more body fat that you're holding on to, the more weight you can lose in a shorter amount of time. And that's because you're going to be holding on to more water weight. I've had some clients lose five pounds in just the first week on my program by implementing a few of the things that I'm going to talk you through today. Step one is to get your diet right. Losing this much weight this fast, you don't have much room for error. You're going to have to be dialed in from day one to day 30. And that starts with setting yourself an aggressive calorie deficit. When you put yourself in a calorie deficit where you are burning more calories than you are eating and drinking, you start to lose weight and body fat. There's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. So if you were happy losing a pound of fat a week, which is four to five pounds every single month, that's the deficit that you'd want to aim for. But if you want to lose 10 pounds in the next 30 days, we need you losing 2.3 pounds each week, which means you need to take 3,500 and multiply it by 2.3. That means that you'd need to create a 8,100 calorie deficit, which when you break it down by day, is 1,150. Now, that's a big number, and I certainly don't want you to be aiming to eat 1,150 calories less every single day. I'd recommend that you create the majority of that deficit by eating at least 750 calories less each day, but how you create the rest of that daily 1,150 calorie deficit, the other 400 calories that you need, we're gonna talk about in step two. In order to know, to have certainty that you're actually creating that 750 calorie deficit each day, you're going to need to track what you're eating. My Fitness Pal is free and it's very easy to use. It's the app that most of my clients use, so I'd recommend you start there. And if you've never done it, if you've never tracked your food, this is going to change your life. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's the number one game-changing habit. It gives you so much knowledge about the food that you're eating, but it also shows where you're going wrong. And if you do it consistently for just eight weeks, which by the way is about 0.2% of your life because you live about 4,000 weeks, you're going to have so much knowledge about food. You're going to have such a better relationship with food. In fact, you're going to see food like Neo sees the matrix. And what's kind of crazy about calorie tracking is that my clients find that when they do it, it makes them much more adhering to every other element of their program. Great example of this is one of my clients, Will. He's been with me for nearly a year now, and as you can see from his photos, he's lost a ton of weight. And the first few weeks that he was with me, the first eight to 12, he was tracking his calories meticulously. And that is how he got such amazing results. And then he decided to be a little bit more lackadaisical. In fact, I actually encouraged him to take a break from the calorie tracking so that he didn't get too obsessive with it. And what's so funny and so crazy is after a six to eight week break from calorie tracking, he's back on it. And because he's back on it, he's finding himself so much more adherent, so much more compliant with his workouts. Aside from building amazing awareness of the food that you're actually putting in your mouth, what calorie tracking does for you is it gives you structure. But aside from the structure that it gives you, let's break it down even more. If you're serious about losing 10 pounds in just 30 days, but you're not tracking your calories, how the heck are you gonna know 
if you're hitting your numbers or not. And to make sure that you're tracking your calories accurately, the other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is weigh your food. Here is a food scale that I bought off of Amazon. It cost me less than $10. And a lot of people make this huge song and dance about weighing their food. They take the mick out of people who are doing it. But honestly, this is the difference between weighing your food and not weighing your food. This is me not weighing my food, and this is me weighing my food. Now, that literally took one extra second of my day. So if I was to weigh my food two, maybe three times per day, that's gonna take me an extra three seconds, three extra seconds for a lifetime of better eating. And given the fact that those three extra seconds are gonna give you the peace of mind that you're tracking your calories accurately and help you to lose those 10 pounds in the next 30 days, I would say it's well worth it. Okay, so that's how much you should be eating. Now we need to talk about what you should be eating. Regardless of the amount that you're eating, I would always recommend that you build your diet on five principles. These are the same principles that I build my diet on and the same principles I recommend my clients build theirs on. If you wanna lose a significant amount of weight in a short period of time, you wanna make sure that you're eating a high protein diet. The best sources of protein for you are gonna be lean meats, fish, and eggs because they're all relatively low in calories and high in protein. Not only that, they're also the best sources of protein because they are what we call complete proteins. They contain all nine of the essential amino acids that we can only get by eating food. And amino acids are the building blocks of the protein itself. So without them, your body isn't able to synthesize and produce more protein. Now you might have been told in the past that protein is only for the bodybuilders who wanna build bigger muscles, but nothing could be further from the truth. Protein's a fantastic tool if you're trying to lose weight and body fat because it keeps you feeling full and stops you from thinking about food 24 seven. When you're in an aggressive calorie deficit, like we're setting you up with here, that's gonna be very important. There's three reasons that protein does this. First and foremost, because it's the hardest of the three macronutrients out of your protein, your carbs, and your fat for your body to break down. The second reason is because it sits in your stomach for longer, and it sits in your stomach for longer because it's harder for your body to break it down. And the third reason is that because it sits in your stomach for longer, it expands the walls of your stomach, and it sends a signal to your brain that you are full. And as a result of those three reasons, having a high protein diet is gonna stop you overdoing it on your calories. Now, in terms of how much protein you should be having, I would aim for at least 100 grams a day. But a much better target to aim for is to calculate your ideal body weight in pounds, not in kilos, in pounds, and to aim to have that many grams of protein each day. So let's say that your ideal body weight was 150 pounds. Well, that's how many grams of protein that you would wanna aim for each day. But if you want some help with all of this, because I appreciate I've thrown a lot of numbers your way today, you can click the first link in the description that's underneath this video, and I'll send you personalized calorie and protein targets for you. It's completely free to use. It's gonna take you less than 30 seconds. I'm gonna send you personalized nutrition targets and explain all those targets to you. So you can have complete peace of mind that you're eating the right amount to hit your goals. So if you wanna pause the video, scroll down, click the first link in the description, and then we can crack on. Once we've got your protein target set, we need to talk about your carbs and your fats. I'm sorry to be the one to say this, but for the next 30 days, you're gonna to wanna to be on a low carb diet. Not because carbs are the enemy, but because we wanna deplete you of the glycogen and as a result, the water that you're holding on to. Glycogen is the stored form of glucose. And glucose is what carbs are broken down into when you eat them. It's a simple sugar that our bodies use for energy. And when you don't need all the energy right there and then, when you eat in the carbs, your body stores it as glycogen. However, what glycogen also does, for better and for worse, is bond with water. And it can bond with quite a lot of water. For every gram of glycogen, it can bond with three grams of water. But if we put you on a low carb diet, your body's not gonna have any glucose floating around in your system to use. So it's gonna force itself to use the glycogen, the stored glucose. As a result, you're not gonna be able to hold on to as much water. And bearing in mind that you are about 60 to 80% water weight, it's worthwhile doing this. You want carbs that are high in fiber and nutrient dense. So plenty of fruit and veg, and then simple stuff like rice and potatoes. And then to finish off talking about your macronutrients, you wanna be on a moderate amount of fat. This is to support your hormonal health, which is one of fat's primary roles. And it's so you don't get too sleep deprived, too stressed out or too hungry. I wanna make it very clear though, this is not me suggesting you go on a keto diet. So in summary, we want high protein, moderate fat, low carb. But as well as balanced, omnivorous and nutrient dense, you want your diet to be simple and most important of all, 
enjoyable. Because yes, it is possible to lose 10 pounds in 30 days without hating your life. The first piece of advice that I'd give you to make your diet simple is to find a breakfast that you enjoy and have that every single day. Because when it comes to discipline, when it comes to consistency, the less choice that you give yourself, the easier it is. Then what I do is find four to five meals that you enjoy and can rotate for lunches and dinners. Personally, I rotate five meals for my lunches and dinners throughout the week. I can make them all from scratch in 20 minutes or less and none of them break the bank. And what I'll do at the end of this video is give you a link to another video where I break down my full diet, show you everything that I eat so you can take some inspiration or maybe even copy it if you want. And then we come to the fifth, final and most important principle of how to build your perfect diet. And that's to make it more enjoyable. Now, when it comes to making your diet more enjoyable, I always recommend that you throw in some treats every single day. For me personally, I will always have a big glass of Fanta Lemon Zero Sugar each day. And I'll have two to, well, maybe sometimes four squares of dark chocolate after my lunches and dinners. And another great recommendation that I can give you here, which a lot of my clients use, is low calorie ice cream. Brands like Halo Top or Oppo, because you can devour the entire tub or pint or whatever they call it. And it's like 300 calories. So if you've got a really sweet tooth, if you've got a tendency to reach for the Ben and Jerry's, which is like 1200 calories, what an amazing substitution. You might also want to try intermittent fasting, not because there's any magic around it, not because there's any voodoo science or anything like that, simply because by creating a smaller eating window, you're far more likely to stay within your calorie number. And I don't know about you, but I always find that once I've started eating in that day, I can't stop thinking about food. And that's not really ideal when we're looking to lose 10 pounds in 30 days. You're also gonna to wanna to drink a lot of water. I would recommend that you aim for at least three liters a day, because funnily enough, Drinking more water means that your body holds on to less of it. And drinking a lot of water has the same effect that protein does on your stomach. Remember earlier when I said that if you eat a lot of protein, it expands the walls of your stomach and sends signals to your brain that you're full? Drinking a lot of water does the exact same thing. Because more often than not, you're not hungry, you're thirsty. And most people don't realize that water is like a secondary energy system for your body. Think of your calories, your food, like your petrol but think of your water like your oil, like the lubricant. Your brain is very sensitive, and if you become just one to 2% dehydrated, your brain will start to shut down non-essential processes and systems in your body. Now, what that looks like in real life is that you become lethargic, and we've all been there. We've all felt lethargic in the past, and we know exactly what happens when we feel lethargic. We do less. Well, when we do less, we're gonna burn fewer calories, and it's gonna make losing that body fat, losing those 10 pounds, a heck of a lot harder. Drinking a lot of water keeps you active, it prevents brain fog, gives you more clarity, and ultimately, more energy. And of course, I can't talk to you about your food without mentioning supplements. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say is that you do not need fat burners. Please, whatever you do, stay away from them. They're a complete con and a complete waste of money. But there are three supplements that I wanna recommend to you today that are gonna make this whole process heck of a lot easier for you. First and foremost is omega-3s. Omega-3s are gonna reduce the amount of inflammation in your body. And there's a whole host of benefits to reducing the amount of inflammation in your body. But one of the biggest benefits is that it means you're gonna hold on to less water weight. Second up is a multivitamin. Obviously, you're gonna be in an aggressive calorie deficit. So there's a chance that you're not gonna be getting all the nutrients, vitamins, and minerals that you need to stay healthy. So a multivitamin is a great substitute just to fill any of those gaps. So last but not least, and I'm pretty sure quite a few of you are going to be very happy that I'm saying this, is caffeine. Caffeine is just going to give you that boost you need when you're in a very aggressive calorie deficit and you're struggling for energy. Okay, so that's your diet. That's everything that you need to do. Now, I appreciate there was a lot to that, but I promised you the full blueprint in this video. Once we've got your diet sorted, we need to move on to step two, which is to get you moving. To get you losing fat faster, we want you burning more calories. Now, you might think that means you need to work out two hours every single day, but you'll probably be happy to hear that it couldn't be further from the truth. Because think about it, even if you were to train seven days a week, two hours per session, that's still only 14 hours. There's 168 hours in a week. That means you'd be spending less than 8% of your week in the gym training. So what that says to me, and hopefully what it says to you, is that the lifestyle that you live outside of the gym, the other 92% of your week, is far more important. So the first thing that I want you to aim for is to consistently hit a high step count every day. If you walk 10 to 12,000 steps a day, you're gonna burn an additional 500 calories each day. 
Now that might sound like a lot, but if you break it down, it really isn't. Every eight to 10 minutes, you walk about a thousand steps. And bearing in mind, you're already gonna be doing anything from two to 4,000 steps a day, just pottering around the house, playing with your kids, commuting to work, having more sex with your partner. It means you only need to proactively, to consciously think about walking about 8,000 steps a day. Now bear in mind, you're walking 1,000 steps every eight to 10 minutes, that's about an hour's walk a day. Considering this is only gonna take you an hour and it's gonna help you burn an additional 500 calories, I'd say it's well worth it. And remember earlier when we were talking about your diet and I said we discussed how we were gonna make up the rest of that 1,150 calorie deficit? This is how you're gonna do it. Because if you eat 750 calories less a day and you burn 500 more calories a day from walking, you've just made up your deficit. In fact, you've overdone your deficit. You only needed to create a 1,150 calorie deficit. I say only, that's a big deficit. But now you've created a 1,250 calorie deficit every single day. But on top of the steps, we obviously also want you working out. We want you in the gym and we want you lifting weights, but only three times a week. Three 45 minute full body workouts focused on compound movements with short rest periods and high rep ranges so the intensity is nice and high is gonna help you burn an additional 300 calories each workout and 900 calories a week. And what I'd say about your workouts is that you really don't want to overcomplicate them because the more you overcomplicate them, the less likely you're actually gonna turn up and do them. If you focus on what I just said and do three full body workouts consistently each week, you'll make amazing progress. Build your workouts around compound movements. So squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press, push-ups, pull-ups, dips, lunges, hip thrusts. I could go on, but hopefully you get the idea. Compound movements are multi-joint, multi-muscle exercises that tend to use the biggest muscles in your body. If you do that, you're gonna burn more calories, your workout's gonna be more efficient, you're gonna use all your major muscles more than once in a week, and you're actually gonna build an aesthetic figure that you probably want. Now, I can't promise that you're gonna build a ton of muscle because you're in an aggressive calorie deficit, but you're at least gonna maintain that lean muscle mass, and you're not gonna end up like a skinny bag of bones which no one wants. So that's step two, getting on top of your movement. Now we need to talk about step three, which is your habits. And aside from walking, which if you think about it, is more of a habit than an exercise, the main habit I want you to focus on is all around your sleep. Simply put, if you wanna lose 10 pounds in the next 30 days, getting good sleep is gonna be crucial because it's gonna keep you sane. Now I'm not gonna to lie to you, unfortunately, getting good quality sleep when you're in an aggressive deficit like this is pretty difficult because your brain is sending signals to your body to get up, to go out, to hunt, to get food, to eat, because it thinks you're dying. So the elevated cortisol, the stress hormone, is gonna keep you feeling more alert and more awake. It's gonna make it harder for you to fall asleep. But saying that, there is still plenty that we can do to help you to maximize your sleep quantity and quality. First things first, we wanna clean up your sleep environment. We want your bedroom to be as cold, dark, and quiet as possible. And you can do this in very simple ways. If you have it already, I'd strongly recommend that you invest in some blackout blinds. These don't need to break the bank. You could pick up a fairly cheap set on Amazon. And whilst you're on Amazon, if you haven't already got aircon, I'd strongly recommend you buy a fan too. And while you're there, you might as well pick up a set of earplugs. Those three things are gonna quickly transform your bedroom into a haven. It's gonna make it colder. It's gonna make it quieter. It's gonna make it darker. And those three things are gonna help you to sleep so much better. And the other thing that you wanna do is incorporate a wind down routine. Because if you think about it, the next day really starts the night before. How you perform, the decisions you make, the actions you take are all dictated by how well you've slept. So if you've got a good wind down routine, you're gonna sleep far better, you're gonna make better decisions the next day, and you're far more likely to stick to this plan and lose those 10 pounds. And the wind down routine I'd recommend that you implement is very straightforward. First and foremost, you're gonna wanna set a bedtime alarm. Everybody thinks about setting a wake up alarm, but if you set a bedtime alarm, a time when you're gonna switch off and start winding down to go to bed, it's gonna serve you so much better. To figure out the bedtime alarm that's best for you, you need to work backwards from the next morning. What time do you wanna wake up? Let's say you wanted to wake up at 6 a.m. That means to get a full eight hours of sleep, you're gonna to wanna to be asleep, not in bed, asleep by 10 p.m. If that's the case, I'd recommend you set your bedtime alarm for 9 p.m. It gives you a full hour where you can shut down all the screens, where you can turn off the TV, where you can open a book or listen to a podcast and really start to wind down to make sure that you're asleep by 10 p.m., not getting into bed and thinking about going to sleep and getting the full eight hours that you're gonna to need to feel rested 
restored and relaxed and ready to attack the next day, making the best decisions possible. And to complement this, you're going to want to implement something called the 3 2 1 rule. It's very straightforward. Three hours before you go to bed, you're going to want to stop eating. Two hours before you go to bed, you're going to want to stop drinking. One hour before you go to bed, you're going to want to come off those screens. That's the bedtime alarm. Eating is a metabolic process, and a metabolic process is something that raises your heart rate. But if you think about it, that's kind of counterintuitive to sleep because to be asleep, you need your heart rate to be at a resting level. So if you've eaten late and your heart rate's going up because your body is digesting the food, well, it's not really gonna help you to get to sleep, is it? And then stopping drinking two hours before bed, well, that's simply to stop you waking up in the night to have to go to the loo and disturbing your sleep. Sleep is the foundation of our health. Regardless of your goal, you wanna be prioritizing it. But particularly if you're putting yourself in an aggressive deficit, if you need to make smart decisions every single day for 30 days, you wanna be well rested. When you're asleep, all of your hormones are brought back into balance. Your sleep hormones, your hunger hormones, your testosterone or your estrogen, your sex hormones. And this is so important when it comes to your decision-making process day to day, the amount of energy that you have, the amount of drive that you have, the amount of clarity and mental focus that you have. You want this process to be as easy as possible. And the key that you need to turn to open the door, the lock, whatever, I guarantee you, one of the most important things that you need to be doing is focusing on your sleep. And then we move on to step four, the final but the most important step, and the step where most people fail. And that is to make sure that you're doing everything that we've spoken about today consistently. Because anybody, any single one of you watching this video can do this for one or two days. Doing this 30 days in a row without a break, no matter what happens, no matter if you don't feel like it because it's a little bit stressful, that's hard. But the people who do that are the people who get the results. So it's all well and good knowing this. It's all well and good implementing it for one or two days. But if you really want the result, you need to do this consistently, focusing on doing the basics well, day in, day out. And the best way to do that is to have accountability and support. So I'd encourage you to tell people that you're doing this. You're going to need support around you. Blast it on social media. Get other people to hold you accountable and give yourself a checklist every day. Have you hit your calorie target that day? Have you eaten your protein? Have you drunk your water? Have you got your steps in? And have you prioritized your sleep? If you focus on those five things, and if you physically write them out every single day on a checklist, and then have the action of actually checking them off each evening, not only is it gonna help you feel so much better about yourself because you've achieved it when you don't necessarily see or feel the result. In fact, to be honest with you, you'll probably feel worse, particularly at the beginning when you first start doing this because you're creating so much change in your body and in your brain. Your brain hates change. It likes something called homeostasis. You're gonna feel so much better about yourself. You're gonna hold yourself accountable and you're gonna give yourself a much better chance of actually achieving this. You wanna make those five things, the calories, the protein, the water, the steps, and the sleep a non-negotiable every single day. You're going to need to be in the right mindset to do this. And I've done whole other videos all about this, which you can find on my channel, but essentially you're gonna to need to spend some time before you start thinking about why you really want to do this. Why is losing 10 pounds in the next 30 days so important to you? And if you can't come up with a deep-rooted, intrinsic driver, like you've been heartbroken or you've had a health scare, don't worry, that's completely normal. It just means that you don't want it enough. And that's fine, because as I said, right at the beginning of this video, losing 10 pounds in 30 days is hard. And it's not what I recommend most people would do. This video has given you the full blueprint, but you're the one who's gonna actually have to do the work. You're the one who's gonna have to restrict your food, who's gonna have to track your calories, who's gonna have to do the steps, do the workouts, go to bed earlier than you want to, cut off your social life. So you really wanna think about what your driver is for starting this. Do you want it bad enough? Or would you be happier just losing one or two pounds every single week? What I say to my clients is it's far more important to be on the right trajectory, to be going in the right direction, than to be worrying about the speed that you're going at. Because I can guarantee you, what you really want is a system you're 100% certain is going to work. Once you've gotten that, once you've proven to yourself that you know how to lose one, two, three pounds, it doesn't really matter how fast you lose it. Because you're on the right trajectory, you're going in the right direction. And that's why I encourage my clients to take a much more sustainable route where they're losing one to two pounds every week. That's the full blueprint that you need to lose 10 pounds in the next 30 days. Here's the thing though, it's all well and good talking about it. That's the easy bit. Doing it, 
That's the hard part. Are you actually going to do this or are you just going to keep watching YouTube videos? The real value of any good coaching program, including mine, is the accountability that you get. Getting the accountability to keep you on track or get you back on track if you fall off. Helping you to stay motivated, to support you when you've got any questions. That's what makes the difference. That's what helped this client lose 10 pounds in 30 days. And it's what makes step four, staying consistent, so much easier. And listen, I'll be really honest with you. In fact, I'll tell you something that most YouTubers wouldn't dare to say in front of a camera. The information is free because there's not a whole lot of value in it. The implementation is where the real value is. So if you like the sound of everything I've said today and want some help implementing it, then you can go ahead and click the second link in the description that is underneath this video and apply for my coaching program. And if not, no hard feelings. I hope this video has been useful. I'll see you in the next one.